Okay, okay. All right. Cool. Yay! Hello. 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 Everyone. Good evening. One. Hey, fam. Oh. <laughs> oh, I need to. Oh wow, people Hello. be talking already. And I'm... Standroid. Yeah, people have been chatting away since since their first post was at three fifty eight in the chat room from Sean, and then Frank at six thirty seven logged in. Um, and then Steven at seven twenty seven, and then Clinton. Okay. Wow, unbroken no, streak. Hanging Clinton, out there. Very impressed. Seven fifty. Yeah, the pre. By the way, like this is what's emerged. The pre show, the pre show, pre show chat has happened now, where the people pre, are showing up. Show people chat. are chatting before we go live. Before the pre show, <laughs> the pre show is the chat. Oh hey, basically. hey, yeah. how's it going? Yeah, good day. Yeah, yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. That makes me happy. Yeah. Um, Community. They're super faithful. That's right, Matthew. The, 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 the super faithful. I like it. Um, oh, yeah. Number 36 for, for a perfect attendance. Clinton, Clinton perfect Clinton perfect attendance. Clinton. More, he, I mean, he, none of us can say that. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, That's true. Uh, everyone in the audience, tell us about our audio volume levels. Yeah, how are we if doing? we all sound okay or yeah. not. Um, yeah. My setup this week is a little bit scuffed because I'm going to be switching between three different um, window sources. So, uh, uh -oh. but your, but your audio to... setup didn't change at all. That's why I don't My understand why, didn't change. why you sound different. But you notice I, I little, look a little bit darker because I'm using the Opal Tadpole camera yeah. instead of usually I was using a smartphone as my webcam, which, you know, has incredible camera compared to most webcams. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so and fun fact, I got a Android system update last night and <sighs> and I tapped on it and I did it and then I did the what's new and you know whatever and and sure enough it's like AI features circle the search. I was like, Yay. "Finally, still doesn't work." Ah. What? Still not it, it it is not in my settings anywhere. Like every tutorial I've seen of where to go to enable it or whatever, it is not there. That's weird, man. I, I don't, don't understand. understand. I don't understand either. Yeah. Apparently, I sound a bit tinny. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you don't, you, maybe you're like, I don't know if you have any control over the mic, but like, Jason, you know better than I. What's the, oh, the I... low end or the, the high end, the, 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 the treble, the bass? Like, I feel like it's an what EQ. What is it? Which, which, which wait, are the wait, frequencies? Wait, 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 wait. It's an EQ issue. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, that is if there's even any sort of EQ that could be done to it. You know, you might not even have the controls on that. I wouldn't necessarily go there. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't realize you were using a live, a live, a live uh, mic. I you were yeah, I do when I'm mic. here in my in my other place, my other setup. I use the Blue Yeti, okay. but uh, I, I guess maybe eventually I should figure out some way to easily transport it between these two rooms. It's just a bit of a hassle right now, so yeah, I, no, I gotcha. typically just leave it over there. I mean, in general, a, a lab mic is going to pick up more room, just because it's. You know, yeah, it's usually here. further away from your mouth, and so it picks up more air along oh. the way versus a mic that you're you're talking right into. So, does anyone have a Pixel handy? I have a Pixel. Uh, okay, somewhere. Yes. Go Why, to what? settings. Go to settings. I have Pixel Fold, though. I don't think I can. Have okay. It. Okay. Search settings, and search for hold handle to search. Hold handle to search. Handle to search. Um, Should be under settings, system, uh, gesture navigation. Then tap the menu for the gesture navigation settings. The, the gesture. Right, so settings, nope. systems. Are you looking for circle to search? Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Yeah, he's looking for yeah. the. Oh, yeah. So just, yeah. yeah, gesture navigation is the menu. Okay, so gesture navigation. All right, so show me what you see. I don't know if it'll focus on this, but okay, great, cool. Oh, that definitely awesome. says circle to search. Yeah, so you got it. Nope. No, no, he does not. It is um, literally not there. It's, there. I don't know hey, why dude. it hasn't showed up on some devices. It's literally been possible to enable for months, for like a couple of weeks, actually, at least. I mean, I cleared the cache on Google Play Services. Like, I, I don't yeah. like. I could, I could tell weird. you how to enable it. How do I enable it? ADB. Uh, you, if you're oh, I sending see. an ADB command. Oh no, not right now. Um, Daryl Hilson in chat says that Ron, unfortunately, there were articles published that Google admitted that the 
Pixel 8 non Pro is not getting circle to search, Daryl? I'm on a Pixel 8 Pro. That's not right. Oh, non Pro. Pro. Okay. No, no, no. That's that's not correct. I think Daryl is thinking about Gemini Nano, which is not related to circle. Right. Right. That's different. Yep. All I know is I think it's Google trying to drive me crazy. That's what yeah. it is. Well, that is entirely working. possible. We have said enough shit about them that yeah, maybe yeah. they just have yeah. they just have us on a on <laughs> it is a tease apparently list. working. Yeah. Quick reminder to everybody in the chat, especially our friends over at um, if you're on Twitch, you can use the command on the screen now to submit a title for the episode. Mm-hmm. If you're on YouTube, go to af.showbot.tv um, where you can enter them in manually. At the end of the show, we will pick a show title, which is a fun thing to do. So. It is a fun thing to do. Be a Mike part right. of it. There's no circle to search on the Pixel Fold, though, which is... Nope. Pixel Fold is continues to boggling. get shafted. Kind of mind-boggling, that too. I don't understand that one. I'm very I deep don't get it. it. <laughs> Maybe I'll... I couldn't even... Can I ADB it? I got ADB. I ADB all the time. I guess I can, huh? Is it a... No, Google... The Google app checks oh. what device model you're using you could enable it on other pixels but they only let you do it if you have a pixel 7 or pixel 8. well then uh it's a totally artificial lockout on other pixels this reminds me of crap that happened when i was working for other google partner companies just i, I don't understand this like um allow listing of certain it just makes no sense i hate it it's fun. It's what people like to do. It's what companies like to do. Makes no sense at all. Someone yeah. in a conference product room, product development. Someone in a conference room made a case, and and somebody didn't challenge it strong enough, right? It's. Like, <laughs> oh, I just like they're exclusive. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sure there's a technical reason and a business reason. There and must a, be. I mean, yeah. like, why would it just be arbitrary? Like, hey, let's not have it on the fold. Yeah, okay. I like that how you can like use the little antenna to change his emotions like this. He's like curious. <laughs> curious. This, but this, he's angry, right? So, <laughs> this, he's tired, right? One is up, one is down. Right? Both down would be uh, depressed or... It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sullen. Melancholy. Sullen, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, I, I played a really... So there's this YouTube video I watched last night, which I think is a fun game for, I'm sorry, again, our age group. But it's basically like um, this person put together a uh, compilation of songs from 1955 up to today. They play you... I mean, it's basically guess the song. You play six seconds, you got to guess the song. Yeah. And I was doing real good. Like, I actually was doing pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. And at some point... My husband looks over. He's like, you know, once they get to like 2015, 2016, we're screwed, You're right? Done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, yep, that was about it. We we're like, oh yeah, this and this and this and 1920s and grunt and like early 2000s. Just like, what is this? What's that? <laughs> and then like by 2020, we we're like, yep, never mind. We're just. Watch. But the, also, the list had a very hard rock bias. Um, so there was no R and B, no hip hop, which I was upset by. Um, yeah. but yeah, it was it was really fun up until about 2000. That's funny. So, but I thought, I, I don't know. I wish I had the video to play for you guys because it, w- it would have been fun, I think, <laughs> for um, our age group. <laughs> that, the, that reminds me of the fun I had tonight at dinner because my five-year-old daughter discovered uh, Google. Well, I, I, it's my fault. I used Google Translate to make Google talk and say things. And then we were talking about Italian. So I was translating into Italian. And then she discovered the emojis. And we discovered that Google Translate will say the, the emotion of the... Uh, we'll say the, the the emoji, right? So it'll be, you know, uh, and so now she just sits there and types in four lines of emojis and then presses the speaker and then Google Google says, you know, red happy, heart, happy, sad, <laughs> full moon, half moon, <laughs> pancakes, pancakes, pancakes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, very funny. All, All right. right. Should we do a show? Should we do a yeah, show? I think so. You all set, Jason? I got like you know, drink some coffee or something, but I'm not actually going to drink some coffee, but I'm going to drink some fake coffee so that I wake up a little bit. I'm feeling a little, a little groggy right now. You, um, okay. You, I looks are like you I good am... controlling and doing the lead in or do you want me to do the, the controls or, um, sure. Right. Yeah. Do the controls at the top. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, and think about that. All right. And think about that. All right. Say goodbye. When say goodbye, Michelle, um, I'm going to, he's going to quiet himself. We only heard a blip.
I did the wrong thing. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I did the wrong. You know, there's one button that does the same thing. I did, uh, yeah. So careful. All right. You can hear me. Yep. All right. I'm going to do the overlay. I'm going to go on mute and start the music. All right. All right. Hello, everybody out there, all of you faithful Android users, also known as the Android Faithful. Uh, we are Android Faithful, your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the world of Android. I know I'm faithful. I'm Jason Howell. Uh-oh. We got, we got Hi, I'm muted. On. I'm winded. <laughs> I wasn't expecting me to come up. I was like, sorry. And I'm Ron Richards. <laughs> and I'm Michelle Rahman. Oh boy, gonna have to do some editing on this show. I am really sorry, you guys. Of an edit. Just I am really just sorry, up there you in the guys. Post there, Jason. <laughs> That's okay. It's good to see you all. Good to be here for another episode of Android Faithful on a very consequential week. This is mm -hmm. a big week. Big week. A lot of stuff going on. Should we get right yeah. into the big news? Yes, Jason. Are you ready to? Well, I'm. I, I'm really in the position to show everyone. Yes, uh, we've been teasing it. Those of you watching the live stream right now or watching the video can kind of see it. But very excited to announce that Android Faithful has got merch. Merch! Go. Beep, 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 beep. I am currently wearing the first Android Faithful t-shirt to be available to the general public. Uh, it is called the Android, Fre Android Faithful Frequency, uh, and it's designed by none other than Wynn, uh, thanks to the great work on our promo assets. Um, and you can get this all over at Threadless, our, our, um, you know, our good buddies over at Threadless offer a great service. Uh, you can get it at androidfaithful.threadless.com. Um, and also they have a spring sale going on where everything's like half off. You can get a t-shirt for 13 bucks, uh, which is fantastic. But, um, so it, uh, for our audio listeners, it is a, uh, a, our, the, our logo on a black shirt, although you can change the t-shirt color. Um, but it's more of the darker tones because the design doesn't doesn't work well on a light on lighter tone shirts um, but it's a little the outline of our logo with a little waveform uh, and the Android faithful logo in white uh, and you can get it on a whole bunch of different uh, styles they've got regular t-shirts tri blend you can get it like a softball t-shirt you can get it on a jacket you can get it on a skateboard you got a jacket uh, yeah it's, it's pretty cool My goodness God, yeah I'm, you guys I want to order everything yeah <laughs> literally no. everything so lots of options um, it is the first of many 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 more merch items to come from Android Faithful. Um, so head over to androidfaithful.threadless.com. Get yours today. The sale ends on March 25th, so you want to act fast. You only get a couple more, a few more days for it. Um, but yeah, we're super excited to finally be getting this rolling. So Super excited. Yep. Yeah, we've oh got more gosh, ideas yeah. kind of around this coming up. This is kind of like the first design so yeah, we, stay we, tuned we had to go with the logo right we want to make yeah. it a little different from the patron t-shirt so if you're a patron and you, you're getting a t-shirt you're getting a different style shirt um and what i like about this shirt is that it's the it's our logo but when did an amazing mm -hmm. job for our social media promo assets if you follow us on instagram you've probably seen and i was looking at one day i'm like that's a t-shirt too and so sure totally enough, uh, it is yeah yeah totally. so in, in it, essence there's jason in the t-shirt as well because that is the waveform from the theme song exactly. like i don't know like, oh, oh really that's cool. yeah yeah, yeah so, so it's the so visual you know that. visual representation of our theme song on a t-shirt <laughs> So. Now we just need a reader. So, so you know, someone needs to create an app that can that can read the visual representation of that waveform. So when they walk up to you on the street and you're wearing this shirt, they can hold oh. up the app and it'll play that part of That's the That's a great idea. Oh. That I should all future shirts have a QR code that go to the website. That's a great idea, actually. That's Dang. Great idea. All right, we're gonna That's do that. Okay. I wish I thought about that. Already. It's okay. Yeah, this is, this so. is our first shirt ever. Yes. Uh, well, actually, second shirt ever, but <laughs> well, uh, yeah, first available to everyone. So we're, we're super excited for everybody who's ordered a shirt already. It kind of soft launched earlier today. Uh, with uh, we let the patrons know it was coming, uh, but now the whole audience, we want to let you know. Go to androidfaithful.threadless.com, um, and we're gonna put a link up on our website so you can get to it um, easily. And yeah, thanks everybody in advance for for buying one. We all the money goes to support the show um and we thank you so indeed i'm yeah, jealous i'm gonna have one of everything one. i'm gonna have an android faithful section of my wardrobe now i'm just sad <laughs> i don't have one in time for japan but as ron as ron said earlier in one of our chats i was like well you just got to go back again so i can yeah. have yeah, the no big deal <laughs> yeah, yeah no big deal just return 
Just <laughs> with all, I know, and by I know. then you'll have a number of different designs. Right. And, That's you know, true. Well, and I I know that this T-shirt is already helping you, Michelle, with your uh, wardrobe plans for this coming May because you got a big event to go to, right? Um, I mean, I'm not the only one, hopefully. Hopefully we'll <laughs> yeah. all be there. Well, I mean, in case you all didn't know, uh, that it's that time of year where people solve puzzles. Oh, 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 no. 15 levels of, of puzzles. Not that, oh, if only. Um, if it was, we don't, we're not, so what, this is the event where we don't get free gifts anymore, but we do get to find out what is going on in the world of Android and in the world of Google in general. Yes, Google I.O. was announced. And if you really don't want if you if you want to solve the puzzle and find out for yourself then mute for the next little bit but if you don't really care uh and don't like puzzles it's gonna be may 14th uh at least the main keynote for google io 2024 will be may 14th there are going to be you know live keynotes and on-demand uh sessions for us dev folks um as have been previous years um, I will say, though, that I got an invite as a dev, and even though the website says just the 14th, there is something for devs on the 15th. Um, so, I, and I only mention that just because I wonder, you know, we, we keep talking about, you know, Google I.O. being quite different than it was, you know, what, you know, in the pre, pre-pandy days. Yeah. That's not quite right, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> I like, I like that actually right. the pre pandemic but, but days. yes i don't know that i've heard it before and... it, <laughs> let's, you let's know what? this is just rough. anyway um <laughs> so i i guess at least from our dev side we wonder you know what is going to be on the 15th we don't know um but obviously the things that you know most of us and especially probably the android faith will will care about will be on the 14th and uh i mean i'll i'll, I'll spoil it i'm already going Ooh. uh anyone else thinking about going uh, I, I, I think we're all thinking about it. We're all thinking about it. Thinking about going. We, we will Absolutely. see. Well, well, yeah. So, so with the 14th being the keynote and the major kind of press attendance and stuff like that, and the 15th probably being focused more on devs. Yeah, I'm definitely blocking out the dates if I have to go west. That's for sure. But I know we are all uh, awaiting our official invitations from our good friends at Google, right? So, uh, cross our fingers. We got a good there. feeling about it, though. Yeah, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Good we were there last year. They can't not, you know, like we got to, well, we got to, now we started a thing where we're, we, all four of us were together in those boxes at the shoreline. I, I, it would be, it would be sad if we didn't repeat that this year. So I'm, 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 I'm hopeful. So. A little, a tiny bit of inside baseball. I have like, so last year, even on the dev side, it was the invitations were extremely restrictive. Like, I don't even know how I got in last year. A lot of people didn't. And I will note that friends of mine who, don't even do Android anymore. Don't tell anybody. Um, got invitations. So um, that's not to say that oh, they're just like really? giving out invitations like free candy, but I think they're opening it back up to people that they know have been in the past. Okay. Um, so and, I can only hope that that means something for non So if that's true, then that means more people. And when I'm thinking of last year's event, there was a I'm lot of seats think- open. Oh Were yeah, there a lot of seats open. It I, was I just can't us really in that remember. forward box, right? And yeah, yeah, most of the the front the actual... area was full. The pit was full. The pit was full, yeah. And okay. then we were in the press boxes, and then yep. all those seats behind us, there were open seats were, all the way up to the grass, and the grass open. was open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, mm-hmm. the grass was open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. okay, all right. So, so they're opening it up. Do we think now? This is this the, you know this is another year of the one day event. Maybe Google's already said this, and I'm forgetting it. This is just the way it is now. This is I O. Yeah. I O is a day, right? At well, this point, it seems like, or it's two days if you're a developer, based on what. Well, actually, said. the keynote has always been one day, right? But like they've always had more days for like developer um, secondary keynotes, and that's seemingly what they're going to be bringing back. Although, like they haven't announced what they're actually going to be talking about on the second day. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I I missed that part because last right. year it was just one day still, right? It was you, everything. Yeah. yeah, last year was only one day. There was yeah, one and, the game. Jason, yeah, this while, is slightly I was inside the game. baseball. Yeah. So, but I mean, I can tell you that I'll. I, I was told also the 15th in my invitation, but yeah, who knows? And it even, I don't even know if they're going to have um, sessions like they used to, they used to have like almost classroom sessions where you yeah. go from like session to session. Um, I don't even know if that's going to be the case maybe, but sometimes they also do adjacent events where they have just a bunch of us in a room and they ask us our opinions on things. So I don't know yet. I just, it could be more focused. It could be more breakout. Yeah, with, it could yeah, be more exactly. Yeah. Which I think so. might be, I don't know. I'm, I'm just speculating now. No one's told me anything. And uh, uh, Michelle, yeah. have you heard any rumblings about it, about any details of it or anything that might be on coming? On the second day? No, I don't know no. anything. Either. Or on the first day. You're plugged um, in. What's the whisper I mean, network besides- say? I mean, we're no, we know they're going to talk about Android 15, of course, but Could you just why put up the slide IO? deck that is the keynote, Michelle? <laughs> we know you have it, right? Wait, he's going to tweet it. That's why. Or he's going to no, put, okay. put it on Mastodon or something like that. <laughs> well, so when you're, you have something to say? Or? 
Oh, no, please go ahead. Uh, well, one other question that we don't know might not be happening or, or happening or not. Like we said, uh, we're hoping to go. We're hopeful to go. Uh, we're thinking about if we do go, maybe we throw a party, maybe. Yeah. Um, we yeah. thought since all four of us are going to be together and so many of our friends are going to be there and maybe some of you listening are going to be there. Um, we thought we're thinking about possibly throwing an event um, the, the night of May 14th there in, in Mountain View. Um, but we'd love to know if you want to come. So uh, put up a little form. Uh, it's at bit.ly, uh, bit.ly slash AF Google IO, all one word. Um, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash A-F Google I-O. Um, and just let us know if, if we threw an event, if you'd be interested in coming. Um, and then if you do, if you do let us know if you're coming or not, um, it'd be great to get your email so we can let you know details if it happens or not. We're, we're putting out feelers. We're thinking about it. Again, we're, we're not like Jason, yeah, Michelle, no myself haven't yeah. been invited yet. We're not guaranteed for sure going. We'd really like to, um, but we're wondering if we do, it'd be cool to all get together and maybe do a live podcast. Also, Jason, what do you think? When? That would be, a, well, I think, yes, absolutely. It's on yeah. a, Look, I was on a Tuesday. It's like Google is basically, you know, they haven't baiting us. invited us yet, but they're baiting us. They're basically yeah. saying, hey, would you please come out here and do the show uh, from here <laughs> if we decide to invite you? So, so the, the, the big question though, is that if we did this, cause it's going to cost money and there's going to be, you know, like th there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. We're going to have to line up how we do a live show and all that fun stuff. So we just want to get a sense of you, if anybody in the Mountain View area or the, or the San Francisco Bay area would come to this on the night of May 14th, you don't have to go to IO. It would be totally free. We, we don't, you know, like we want to make it, you know, so really like if we're going to get a spot to do this, we want to make sure people show up. Yeah. Um, right. So, um, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so if you're saying uh, yes, say, yeah. give us your yes that where there's some intention behind that, where it's like, you know what, if you do that, I'm there. Yeah. That's what we want to know. If, if if people are interested, would you actually come to something like this? Because right. because to. to be honest, I don't want to do all the work if nobody shows up. So totally. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to like go through the hassle of like letting help, getting people to help us, and then no one shows up, and then we're like, yeah, oh. right. That'd be a little blood. embarrassing. Right? But it'd be cool to like have a yeah. bar there, get a drink. Yeah. We could do a live show, maybe have some surprise guests. We could, you know, like it, it would be, be fun. fun. It'd be a fun thing. It would so. be fun. So we will see. So let us know. Again, that's bit.ly slash AF Google IO. Um, let us know uh, if you would be interested in that. And, Does and the no capitalization scheme matter yeah. with Bitly? Does what? Does the capitalization of AFG no, I don't think so. IO? I hope no. not. Uh, we'll see. I'm trying to right matter. I don't know. Anyways, uh, if you if you're curious, uh, check the video version, or I'll put it in the show notes. Um, oh, wait. see, so, so you can click the link. I'm trying it, right it does. Yeah. So okay. So then, for audio listeners, just so you know, bit.ly slash capital A capital F capital G oogle <laughs> so <laughs> lowercase and then capital i capital o <laughs> and we're going to put the link in the show notes on androidfaithful.com and in the feed yes. if you're listening to this on the podcast and on youtube we will make sure it's all linkable uh yeah. that you can get to it we'll uh it sorry out. about that when i set it up <laughs> i i would have expected that i would not have expected that to be oh, a thing man. anyway yeah um, it's gonna be... oh, dear. so uh so yeah so just let us know if you want to come so yeah. uh, no worries if you can't or no worries if you're not in the area. But yeah, yeah this is putting out feelers. So <laughs> it'd be so much fun. So. All right. Wow. And it's already IO time. Now now we know that IO news is <sighs> going to be fast oh, and furious yeah. for the next couple of months. That's for sure. uh, probably hearing a lot about Android 15. I don't know why we would hear about Android 15. Oh, wait, we will from you, Michal, right now. <laughs> exactly. Why wait for Google IO when we can talk about Android 15 right now? <laughs> and um, one of the features that I talked about last week, I wrote about for Android Police, is this feature that Google is working on called Powered Off Finding. And this is a feature that will allow you to find select Pixel devices even when they're powered off. So last week I talked about the um, Find My Device Network and basically why it's being held back because of Apple. And um, this feature that I'm talking about when it launches, it will rely on the Find My Device Network because right, basically how the Find My Device Network works is that Android devices will be broadcasting essentially Bluetooth beacons to nearby devices that are also part of the Find My Device Network. And if those devices are in range of the broadcasting device, they can pick up that beacon, encrypt the location of the Android devices broadcasting, 
and then upload it to Google server so that only the owner of the broadcasting device or the people they've shared the encryption key with can decrypt the location. However, in order for a device to actually broadcast the beacon to nearby devices, it needs to be powered on, or rather its Bluetooth controller needs to be powered on and sending those beacons. That's impossible on most Android devices, but um, on select devices that have the necessary hardware to be able to power the Bluetooth beacon and continue broadcasting, even though the rest of the components and the OS are powered off, they'll be able to do this using the powered off finding feature. So what I've found is that Google's working on implementing support for this new system API in Android 15 that allows um, the Google Play Services app to send pre-computed Bluetooth beacons to the Bluetooth controller so that it can store those keys in the memory of the Bluetooth controller so that when the device is powered off, it can continue broadcasting those beacons to nearby devices, even if everything else is shut down. And this is a feature that I have found should be supported on the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro which means it'll likely also be supported on the upcoming Pixel 8a, Pixel 9 series, et cetera. But it's seemingly right now not supported on the Pixel Fold or older Pixel devices like the Pixel 7 series. And um, the reason is likely because, like I said, this is a hardware. This relies on hardware support. You have to have a lane that powers the Bluetooth controller when the rest of the components are down. It's not something you can just patch via software to enable. There has to be something that's done in the factory to enable. And it looks like that has been supported um, at launch with the Pixel 8 series. All we're waiting on is the launch of the Find My Device Network and then the upgrade to Android 15 to enable this powered off finding feature. That's cool. I think that makes a feature like this incredibly, like far more useful if it doesn't need to be on in order to be tracked. That's a, that's a really fantastic. I mean, that's feature. that takes away the friction, right? Yeah. Like that. Uh, this, right. this is almost like how it should work, regardless, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. that's good. And hey, Michelle, it's find my device network. Yeah, it's, it's your it's your it's your bingo. It's your yeah. bingo card. <laughs> Oh man, we should make a t-shirt of an Android faithful bingo card. <laughs> Put it in the doc. I'm putting man. in the ideas. Okay, that's a good idea. AI is just real big in the middle. Oh wait, no, we you wouldn't want to do that. It's like a freebie in it. <laughs> Never mind. We can talk about this later. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Very, very cool. Very good idea. Uh, um, Love it. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna see that in Android 15 potentially. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Because yeah. we still have no idea when the Find My Device Network will actually launch. Right. And right. this feature is not going to launch if there's no Find My Device Network. For sure. What else we got? One feature that we that I do expect will be launching in Android 15 is built-in support for app archiving. So if you're not familiar, Google Play has had an app archiving feature since last year. This allows you to automatically archive apps when you're low on space to free up some storage space that are taken up by those apps. So basically how it works is um, when developers submit apps in the Android app bundle format, Google's backend tool takes that bundle and it generates this really stripped down version of an app called an ar archived APK. And then when you go to archive an app inside Google Play, Google Play pushes this archived version of the app that's like significantly smaller and it overwrites the original base installation, but it doesn't clear any of your user data. So that means you can archive the app and then when you restore it, it downloads the original app installation files and then you're back to where you were. So as an example, in the um, Android Authority article that I did, I did I did in the demo with the Uber app, before I archived it, it took up over 300 megabytes of data. After oh I archived God. it, it took up about like 14 megabytes, so like an over 90% size mm. decrease. But after I restored it from the archive state, I was able to open back up into the Uber app without having to sign in again. So all my, my account was already there. I didn't have to log in, go through all that hassle. So this could save you some time if you think, clear up some space from some heavy hitter apps, but then quickly reclaim it. And the benefit of this being built into the Android OS and Android 15 is that you can go to the settings app and you can manually archive apps that you want. Previously, this is all only handled automatically by the Google Play Store. So you were basically limited to whatever it decided to archive for you. But um, this is being done into the OS, so you can choose when to do it. And also this means that other third-party app stores could add their own implementation of app archiving, and that would be integrated with the OS. When, whenever app archiving comes up, I just can't think about how revolutionary it was when Nextbit did it. Mm -hmm. 
right? Like yep. the, the fact that it's taken how many years now to get to the point, to get the functionality to the point where um, Nextbit had it like out of the box all those years ago. Yeah. I think one key difference is that the Nextbit solution, they were, I think they were literally uploading your entire to, app plus data to their cloud. To their cloud yeah. Right. Yeah. This, in this situation, your data never leaves your device. Sure. It's yeah. No, this is, this is the way it should be. Yeah. This is, this is awesome. This is great. But yeah. conceptually, I mean, like the giving you that and level just seeing of control, the process, seeing the yeah, little exactly, icon yeah. kind of fade yeah. out and then come back and everything. Yeah. It, it, it totally reminds me of that too. And I can't help that because that's how it was implanted, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. Very cool. But yeah. All right. Nice. Um, all right. Well, before we get to the next story, I'm going to revisit the Google I.O. thing, by the way. Uh, while Just Michelle was chatting, I quickly made a bit.ly with lowercase letters. So <laughs> bit.ly slash AF Google I.O. All lowercase. That works. It works. If you capitalize the AF and the G and the I.O., that works too. So we're sure. covered either way. But why? I also want to remind, I mentioned it again. You can come to this if you're no matter what it's this will be open to anybody so if you're going to io you can come if you're just a fan and you're a listener and you're not going to io you can still come so it is it, yeah. this could be open to anybody so you don't need to be going to io to come to this event eventual uh you know their thing um so and if you, you, have, make and that if you have no like possibility of even going to io or being in the area yeah don't don't worry about the form like right, yeah we don't yeah. need to know that you're across the country and like oh well i won't be able to make it like exactly we're we're really running this to know like of the people who could possibly make this who would yeah and that's exactly. that's what it's all exactly. about so, so anyways okay um, thank you for that all right so back to the news um this is actually something that's been developing over the past couple of weeks i've been tracking it michelle i know you've been tracking i saw you tweeting about it um but uh, Android, one of the great things about Android and gaming and stuff like that was the fact that uh, there have been Nintendo emulators available literally for years, right, mm, Jason? Like kinds, how, how long ago was the first time emulators. you saw a Nintendo emulator in Android? That's, you know, that's one of the things that I loved about Android early on was the fact that, oh, wait a minute, that emulation thing that I could do on my PC, I can now do that on my smartphone and I right. can take Galaga with me or whatever the so, random Galaga game that wasn't I spent 10 Nintendo, seconds yeah, playing, you, you know? <laughs> it, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, but so um, Nintendo, I don't know if you've noticed, is doing very well these days. Uh, they yeah. just they just announced another Super Mario Brothers movie coming in 2026. Oh my goodness! Um, things are going very well in the world of Nintendo, um, and so as often happens, Nintendo is actually increasing their efforts to remove third party emulators of their systems uh, from places like Google Play. Um, they targeted Tropic Haze LLC, which is the developer of a Switch emulator, emulator Nintendo Switch emulator called Yuzu, Y-U-Z-U, uh, which forced a settlement for $2.4 million. So tr tr uh, Tropic Haze had to pay Nintendo $2.4 mm -hmm. million. Dollars. And That's... now Nintendo is focusing on other emulators. Uh, Drastic, a Nintendo DS emulator, uh, they changed their, their app from being $4.99 to free with a note that it will soon be removed from the Play Store altogether. Uh, Skyline was a Nintendo emulator that was removed from the Play Store after Nintendo went after it. Uh, and Citra, a 3DS emulator, was also discontinued. Um, so Nintendo emulators are being targeted and might not have much life left to them. Um, and Michelle, actually, I, I just remembered, I saw a tweet that you did that folks were using Yuzu like as a, as a, like a development platform, right? Weren't they like Yuzu oh. was like... Just a... I mean, uh, one quick correction. A testing Skyline, platform, right? Skyline was discontinued before any of this stuff got happened, it. but the developers got out before this could happen yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, like one thing, it's kind, of, it's kind of like an unspoken rule among like tech reviewers. Like if you want to push an Android phone to its absolute limits, there's like one or two games on the Google Play Store that might do it, like Genshin yeah. Impact or Honkai Star Rail. But if you want to really push the limits of the CPU and the GPU, you want to emulate a game using like Citra for 3DS, bumping the internal resolution to like 4X, seeing how crazy it can handle it, or even Yuzu, which has gotten really, really good. Yeah. And that's probably the problem. It's, it's really good. You can use your phone mm -hmm. to emulate modern Nintendo Switch games. So no wonder Nintendo is angry at that. Sure, yeah, because that's, that's like, taking money away course. from them immediately. Because as we all yeah. know, Nintendo Switch is powered by Android, which is mind-boggling. Well, so. It's powered by an ARM processor, but sure. not directly running Android. Right. But uh, yeah, like it's it's very useful. Like I have Yuzu installed on my devices, and it's very useful to see how well it runs like on modern day hardware. And um, you even saw it like on Linus Tech Tips videos, like their reviews. They use it as like the, one of their benchmarking tools, the benchmark performance of Android flagships, and something I used to do on XDA when I did those long form reviews as well. 
Right. I have so to admit, oh, sorry, it's, a, it's a bummer. I mean, and so you got to wonder if it's going to be side loading future, like it's going to go back to a underground thing because you can't kill it, right? Right. People still have the APKs. Like you can right. still install them. The, the thing that's not going to happen anymore is continued bug fixing and for the future right. development on a lot of these projects it. until some other team or project picks it up. But it's kind of like it kind of puts a lot of the unspoken value of a lot of these Android gaming handhelds into question because a lot of the things they, they would never directly market the fact that people are using them for emulation, but 90% of people were buying these things so they could use emulators on them. They were not buying them for yeah. games that you could got downloaded off of Google play. I mean, with, with a few exceptions, but that was one of the very popular reasons why people would buy Android gaming handhelds, but just nobody really wanted to talk about it in the open. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. a bummer. But I mean, sad. emulation on on Android, like it's it's a strength uh, of the of the OS that you could even do this in the first place. And, you know, always was really surprising to me how actually very easy it is to, to find these things through the Play Store. There's a part of me that like I can see both sides because like, you know, aging gaming hardware like i'm i'm such a nostalgic person and i and i have you know a very strong connection to my childhood experience playing a lot of these games that you can't actually get anymore i'm like i'm not okay with those things just like fizzling off and dying forever like i want there to be a way for these things to live on into eternity and in fact i think it's important for history but when you've got a company like Nintendo that has a, an insanely successful platform like the Nintendo Switch, still very current until they release their next Switch, which is probably sometime soon, um, you know, that's that's modern. That is now. And then you've got these emulators that can basically do the same thing on this hardware. It used to be that hardware like a phone was underpowered for modern consoles. And in this case, that isn't necessarily the case. I can totally understand why Nintendo would want to crack down on this. It's in Absolutely. their rights. You got to. Yeah. It's in the law that you have to to protect your copyright or protect your trademark. You have, you to, have enforce to enforce it. it. Yeah. So. Right. That is true. It was also oh. interesting, like a philosophical difference, like an enforcement difference between the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Even though you know there are emulators available for iOS and iPad OS, you have to sideload them using like Alt Store or whatever mm -hmm. other method they use. Like Apple never allowed them at all on their yeah. App Store. Versus Google, pretty much didn't really care. Like you had these emulators available for download through the Google Play Store. You never had to sideload them for the most part because they weren't shipping with games. They weren't. You know, they, they weren't. They weren't shipping with a marketplace for the games. Even then, um, Google could have cracked. Even could, Google could have banned them, just like Apple did. Like, there's nothing. Could, yeah, it, it's that. it's an interesting kind of like uh, different uh, perspective that each of the companies I think holds on that. Google's probably perspective is that they could, to, in a sense, hide behind the fact that oh well, yeah, okay, these could be used for that, but they could also be used for good things. It's kind of like Cody, right? Like the the Cody <laughs> media thing. You can get that through the Play Store, and like I I'd, I'd venture to say like. 80%, 90% of the people that get Cody get it because there's pirated content galore all over the place and it's super easy to use, right? But um, but there's that like 10% that are like, oh, well, no, it's just it's just a media platform for anything. Yeah, sure, it can do that, but Plex. I want it for this. Hmm. And right. that's enough. <laughs> that's enough for it to be okay. <laughs> that's like Google's stance, I think, generally speaking. Uh, oh, well, we can't have nice things. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> or we can until it becomes too much and the company decides to uh, eradicate them. The I'm surprised they didn't do it earlier. They've been cracking yeah. down on even like streamers for a long time. Yeah. It's a different mm -hmm. sphere. But Nintendo is just incredibly protective of their IP for better or for worse. And of course, it's totally their right there. They have a very strong brand. It's a very old brand, so they want to protect it. But I do question sometimes, I don't know, the lack of the loss of opportunity there. Um, and as you said, Jason, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with like maintain, like there's, 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 there's such a nostalgia for Nintendo. I have it too. I don't know. Like, I, I know it gets really dicey, but there's something to be said about in elevating the fact that people still have this nostalgia and want to kind of access that 
experience. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Here's here's my question though, and so it's funny that we say this because I've got a basement full of uh, consoles that I don't do anything with. Like I'm going to go sell my old Xbox and my old Xbox 360 because oh. I just don't use them anymore. But I'm keeping my Nintendo 64 because I want my kids to play Mario Kart and Goldeneye at some point. So here's my question, and I don't have a Switch, and I'm so far beyond with this. The Nintendo makes the old games available now via they didn't they have that on the I Wii and the, 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 the Wii or whatever they it was? have yeah. a, they do have a lot of games available on Switch not everything yeah. but right. they do mm-hmm. make a lot of them available. the ones that they still have the license for that they still love their games and stuff like yeah. that like you probably can't get Burger Time ported to Nintendo <laughs> NES right because they don't know they didn't own that game right yeah so right yeah. but so but quality of a lot of these of... ports also varies significantly yeah well that's true and and a lot of the original you know like Konami or whatever these these kind of classic you know arcade or of game steel. franchise whatever <laughs> franchises are bringing back like mega collections and re-releasing yeah. them and yeah. I mean a part of that is because there is demand and yeah. there's obviously demand because people are willing to you know do the emulators and stuff I would for the longest time, those things just weren't available anymore. It was like, well, well, that's lost to the sands of time. If you wanted them, you had to do this. But now, and you ironically, don't. ironically, a lot of those ports that are being released for modern consoles actually contain emulators that are used to run them. <laughs> oh, things. totally. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I. Yeah. I uh, yeah. No, I would much rather play original Castlevania or Super Star Wars for the Super NES than any game on Switch now because that's just where my head is at. Um, yeah. I mean, as Matthew in the chat, I want to give you a shout out because he said, I remember Burger Time as a kid on uh, on Intellivision. I still have my Intellivision in the basement. Oh. I'm not getting rid of that. I love it. Don't get rid of that. So, yeah, that's... Yeah, Intellivision was the best. So, yeah. Oh. Nostalgia right. strong. That's why X-Men 97 is now a thing. I have it opinions is, yeah. about that. That's a different show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, um, Real quick, all you amazing patrons out there, we love you for supporting the show the way you do, patreon.com slash androidfaithful. You enable us to do this each and every week. And for those of you who are not patrons, the Patreon, the, the patrons are supporting us so that you can watch it too and listen to it. So it's they're pretty awesome, right? Uh, patreon.com slash androidfaithful. And we, every week, we put up a poll to give patrons the opportunity to vote for a story, a news story. And we did that this week. And we all actually also are featuring uh, the art that is sent in, usually AI generated. I guess now we have I, to, dis- do we have to disclose this on YouTube now, I think? Um, anyways, um, <laughs> who who created this this AI image? Uh, so uh, do you Joe remember? Catskill from a uh, loyal patron, he submitted this little cartoonish version of a, uh, I'm assuming this is a bug droid reading the news on his own podcast. Um, oh, okay. And it, it's it's very colorful. I like the mix of colors. I like the the big eyes as if he's got some startling news to share in his podcast in the microphone. I, I, so I like the, uh, the extra little wires of microphones pouring yeah. out of his body as if he's ready for other people to join him, but they aren't there yet. <laughs> I also like that the um, news is about bugs. Like yes, it's like course. a newsletter. Like this week's bugs. <laughs> and the other side is the fixes. Yep. Um, thank you, Joe, for submitting that one. You thank can send you your, for you that. Send, great. Your, yeah, please send your bug droid creations to contact at androidfaithful.com. Uh, we got a great. We got a pool of them to pull from already, but we need more. So send them in. Yeah, so. keep them coming. This is a this is a great thing that that we love featuring. So, anyways, we put up three news stories for patrons to pick from. And let me see if I can scroll to them. In third place, 19% of people voted for the Pixel 9 made debut Google's adaptive touch feature. In second place, 40% voted for Apple reportedly exploring a partnership with Google for Gemini powered features on iPhone. And it was neck and neck. Like we actually had to kind of delay the call on this because it was so close. That was 40%. 41% got the win. And it turns out that this is actually Michelle's article. So I'm going to throw it over to Michelle. But basically, Android phones, Gemini Nano, uh, getting a, a, a pretty cool feature that Google has offered, but on device instead of in the cloud. Tell us about that, Michelle. Uh, so basically, a couple of months ago, Google, through their Search Labs experiment feature in the Google app, rolled out a feature that lets you summarize web articles using AI. And um, if you enable this experiment, go to any article, 
and then you'll see this like get AI summary button that taps that you tap on it. It shows like a bullet point summary of the article that you're currently on. And I found evidence that looks like this may be powered by Gemini Nano on compatible smartphones in the future. And the article basically just goes over the evidence. Um, it's kind of tough to explain the evidence, but uh, so I highly recommend reading the article if you want to see like what the evidence is. But the TLDR is that this feature may be coming to Gemini Nano powered devices. It'll still be available on other devices, just be running on the cloud through whatever, you know, uh, Gemini Pro model is running this article summary feature. But um, if you want the on device, maybe the privacy security aspect of it, you care about that, you can have that for you running on device on devices like the Pixel 8 Pro or the Galaxy S24 series. I will admit I've been using this. Uh, uh, this first popped up. I remember Michelle popped up a couple a couple of months ago, right? A couple of weeks ago or so in, in this year. Um, and I, I use it quite frequently because so many articles have so much crap and bloat on the pages, and I don't want to have to scroll through and deal with the ads and stuff like that. So I give give me a, you know generate a summary, and I get a little summary of the articles. So I know what's what, what's coming and make the decision if I want to you know deal with that and and do the deep dive in. So I appreciate this functionality. I think it's great. You get the cliffs cliffs notes of the internet. I'll take it. <laughs> Listen, I'm a busy man. <laughs> just get to this get to the real stuff um awesome yeah i think that would be a really really useful uh feature and knowing that that's on device yeah i think that's going to get a lot of use uh big shout out to mark wansel to jesse bernudi bernardi i'm not sure on the last name kevin balancia three amazing patrons who are with us and supporting us through patreon.com slash Android Faithful. We love you all. You're so amazing. Thank you for your support. And uh, can't wait to see who we feature on next week's episode when we do this again. And I will remind everybody that we live stream every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern 5 p.m. Pacific on youtube.com slash daily tech news show and on twitch.tv slash good day internet. And it is, and it is worth it to either watch live or go to YouTube to watch the recording after it comes out, uh, to see when use, uh, uh, OS X is, uh, the Mac OS is little, uh, emo <laughs> like hearts that come out and thanking patrons. So. <laughs> she knows all the tricks. Yes. I have not I've upgraded done, I've to I've done whatever. it during meetings so many times, you guys. You can turn it off. I keep telling everyone. I don't everyone. care. Nope, nope. I'm doing nope. it out of spite think, now, Ron. Yeah, I think she's just embraced <laughs> it at this it point. Okay. Oh, that's great. It's, it's part of the thing. It is. All right. Coming up, we've got some really great hardware news. All right, uh, let's start with you in the hardware block, Michelle, because you've uh, you've had the Zenfone 11 Ultra for a little while now. What you think? That's right, uh, Jason. I've had the Zenfone 11 Ultra for about a month now. So they announced this last Thursday, so we didn't get a chance to talk about it last week. Um, but now that I've had it for a month, I can talk about it in full. And when they announced the Zenfone 11 Ultra last Thursday, it sparked quite a lot of discussion online about whether this is the end of small phones. There was even an article, there's even a video by Marquez Brownlee that went viral. It's about like small phones are dead, we kill them or something like that. <laughs> and it's when you look at the Zenfone 11, it's a, little, it's a bit true compared to the, the Zenfone 8, 9, and 10, which each boasted a smaller than six inch display. I think each were 5.9 inches. The Zenfone 11 Ultra has a massive 6.78 inch display. It's not only significantly larger, but also has the same overall design of the ROG Phone 8, minus the air trigger shoulder buttons or the USB-C port on the side. And actually, I'm going to switch my camera over now to... Crossing fingers. Yes. It works. There you go. And um, actually, before I show you the, the phone in full, let me just show you the, the layout quickly. Since it has the same overall layout as the ROG Phone 8, it also has this off-center USB port, C port on the bottom. You can see it's like on the left. Mm -hmm. And this makes it a bit awkward to use with some car docks and many third-party telescopic gaming controllers. And um, yeah, I, I, that's one aspect of, of, that I don't like that it borrows from the ROG Phone 8. And just, just to give you a bit of a perspective on how big this phone is. So here's the, on the left, I have the Zenfone 8. And on the right, the Zenfone 11 Ultra. Like, that is it's, massive. It's significantly bigger, right? It almost looks and, like you're holding the Ultra closer right. to the camera. And like, <laughs> this is the Zenfone 9. You see the exact same size as the Zenfone 8. And then the Zenfone 10, exact same size. 
as the Zenfone 8 and 7. So Compared you to that, the Zenfone 11 Ultra is just uh, way bigger. You right? could so fit this the, is clearly a dramatic difference. You could Jeez. fit the Zenfone 10 completely inside the Zenfone 11 Ultra. It, it, like, it completely <laughs> envelops it. That's how much bigger it is on all... Like, it's, it's, it's wider and taller. That's crazy. Yeah. And before I... Um, the reason I'm not going to show you, like my actual Zenfone 11 Ultra without the case is because I did an oopsie and I dropped it and I cracked <laughs> the back. So here are some photos of the phone before I did the oopsie. Oh, remember It's quite a beautiful when... phone. Oh. It's quite a beautiful phone and I'm, I'm sad I can't show you the actual back. But um, here are some I feel like we I need some heartwarming when it still music to play over this. I'm glad, I'm glad you got we photos of it before, before you broke it. That's great. It was during this photo shoot that, I, that the incident happened, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so back to my I'm sorry. window. I've been there. I can only laugh because it happens. Been there. I know. Yes, I know. It happens. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty used to the bigger phones. So the large size hasn't really bothered me. But if you are coming from the Zenfone Eight or Zenfone Nine or Zenfone Ten, you might find this bigger size challenging or off-putting to use. But it being bigger actually has some material benefits, as there's now room for a much larger 5,500 milliamp hour battery um, versus the 4,300 milliamp hour battery in the Zenfone 10. Battery life and charging for me have been pretty great, by the way. I've been averaging about five to six hours of screen on time each day. And because of the larger size, there's also room for a third camera. There's a 32 megapixel 3X optical zoom telephoto lens with OIS on board. And there's also a 50 megapixel IMX 890 sensor coupled with ASUS's signature six axis hybrid gimbal OIS, plus a 13 megapixel 120 degree field of view ultra wide angle lens. And the Zenfone 10 also had a 50 megapixel main camera. I, I think it had a IMX 7 something, and it also had a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle. So what's new is the 3X telephoto. My overall impression of the camera is that it's just fine. Let me pull up my window quick of the photos that I took. Sorry, my thing is a bit scuffed here. So here we go. I made an Amazon Photos album of all the photos that I took. And uh, yeah, I took a whole bunch of photos at the Houston Rodeo. Pretty fun experience. Nice. I'm just showing some of them here. Let me go back to... Yeah, I don't know if you can still see it. Well, we can see the half screen, basically. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Let me... I don't That's know. Right. My mouse has disappeared. Let me just go back to my video capture device. Mouse, where did you go? Mouse, where did you go? Where's the mouse? <laughs> <laughs> We've lost the mouse. We've lost Come the mouse. Come back, mouse. Oh, no. All right, well, maybe we uh, pivot to something else while he looks for the mouse. <laughs> Here's the phone. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? On the site. <laughs> eh, technology. That's what always happens. So, so Michelle, what, what else can you tell us about the phone for, from getting uh, hands-on with it? Okay. Sorry, there you go. I think you can see my yep, video now. Got your mouse. There we go. There we go. <laughs> So my overall impression of the camera is that it's just fine. Uh, I think I'll save you the time of going back and forth between the windows, and I'll just share the Amazon Photos link and the Amazon Video link and just talk about the photos so you can look for yourself. My overall impression of the camera is just fine. Like, the photos and videos that it takes aren't bad or stellar, and that's fine for, by, for me. I've never noticed an issue with inaccurate colors or out-of-focus objects for people, although I do think the bokeh effect in the dedicated portrait mode looks noticeably fake in some of the photos that I took. The 3X telephoto looks pretty good, like the photos from it, except, you know, it does offer like enhanced zoom up to 30X, which I think is kind of unusable. Um, I think the standout feature of the Zenfone camera, and it's been good since the older devices, is the stabilization. Even with the default adaptive stabilization mode, sorry, uh, it's amazing. Like you can see if I'm going to the camera, you see there's an adaptive stabilization mode. And it's also a hyper steady mode. Both are amazing. Like it's it's look like you're walking around with a gimbal on your hand when you're walking around taking vlogging style videos with it. If I had any complaints, I'd say that you know there's no consistent video recording um, resolutions. Um, the low light video quality is not that great. 
doesn't support Google's HDR, ultra HDR format, and low light selfies, even though ASUS says they imply a noise reduction algorithm to them to make them look better, I still think they don't look all that great overall. However, I do think the phone generally takes great selfies in good lighting conditions and the addition of the 0.8x wide angle mode, here you can see the, the webcam <laughs> that I'm using, uh, is a pretty great option to take group selfies. There are other AI camera features like AI portrait video, um, AI object sense, light trail mode, etc. I only tried out the AI portrait video, which applies a bokeh effect to in real time to human and other pet subjects. Um, I think it's a, a little gimmicky. It is kind of cool when it works, though. Moving on from the camera, there's also larger dual stereo speakers. You have a speaker at the bottom and a I think speaker is at the top grill. The screen to body ratio is like 95 or something like some crazy like that. So there's barely enough room for actual big speakers, but it does work pretty well. And you know, if you do care about that, there's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the bottom, which is nice. To be honest, like I don't really care about that anymore because it's been so long since phones dropped them. Mm -hmm. But if you do care about that, it's nice to have. The display, though, it has a full HD resolution LTPO AMOLED display that goes up to 120 hertz in most apps and up to 144 hertz in most games. Um, one thing that I don't like about the refresh rate is that in the default auto mode, for some reason, um, Zen UI, like, it loves to force the refresh rate down to 60 hertz in apps like Reddit or in apps like Telegram or many apps that have like a web view that use like a, that integrate a web browser. So it's kind of jarring to like use a lot of apps that I frequently use, which are social media apps that have like web views. They're scrolling at a stuttery 60 hertz and then I open Chrome or some other app and like the settings of the launcher and it's a buttery smooth 120 hertz. So typically I just like to stick it to 120 hertz constant. I, I don't let the OS handle the refresh rate at all. And I hope, you know, Asus kind of looks at that and fixes that. Rounding out the specs, there's an aluminum frame, which I, again, I can't show you here, <laughs> and an IP68 rating, 68 5 watt wired and 15 watt wireless charging, and Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 paired with up to 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes UFS 4.0 storage. As you'd expect with these specs, the Zenfone 11 Ultra has no trouble whatsoever handling whatever I throw at it, um, which as I mentioned before, the amount of stuff you can do with a phone this powerful is kind of waning with the golden age of emulators winding down. Uh, but there are some stuff you can do. Like there are some on-device AI features that this phone packs that I guess, you know, kind of do need this processing power. Like there's an AI transcription feature in the sound recorder app that I can show you quickly right here. It's basically, uh, there we go. Let me show my, I had this recording. I just, I just did this, did this brief recording as a test, and it just transcribed this in real time. There's also a generate summary feature that runs on device AI, and it just summarizes it. It's just like a quick five second clip. I doubt it can actually summarize yeah, this right. sort of thing. Um, it also has you know an AI call translator in the dialer app, AI noise cancellation, VoIP apps like WhatsApp, and an AI semantic search feature. So the semantic search feature basically like you take photos of people, it can like recognize people. It can recognize objects like food, sky, vehicle, plant, et cetera, things like that. Um, the AI transcription tra call translator features rely on language packs. There's also a on-device, this one I thought was kind of cool at first, an on-device AI wallpaper generator. So if you're familiar with the Pixel phones, you can generate wallpapers using the cloud. Well, this one's totally on-device using stable diffusion model that then, um, is upscaled using a super resolution technique. I thought it would be useful at first and neat, but unfortunately, because it's all running on device, you're kind of limited in the quality of the images you can get. And also you have to download a three gigabyte model to even make this work. So I'm not as sold on it anymore. But if you like having all your data run on device, then I guess it could be useful. Uh, lastly, the Zenfone 11 Ultra, as you can see, runs Zen UI on top of Android 14 with Unfortunately, only two years of OS updates and four years of security updates promised. It does pack some nifty features like built-in integration with um, Microsoft's Link to Windows feature. If I could show you right here, Link to Windows. This is integrated built-in, which means that you can stream apps from your phone to your Windows PC, share your clipboard, or use it as an instant hotspot. 
There's also ASUS's GlideX software, which does much of the same thing, but with ASUS devices. Um, there's also a new Video Genie feature that offers additional controls when using media apps. And for the first time in Zen UI, integrated support for Google's live captions feature and their personal safety apps. So I really do think that um, Zen UI overall is pretty neat for what it has. And I really like that you can customize it. Um, it's basically like stock Android, but with a lot of useful enhancements and the ability to customize a lot of the default settings. But there are still some annoyances, like the fact that background app management is still enabled by default, which could be why, um, for me, Gmail notifications has just been hit or miss. Like, I've not been getting them on time. So I've had to, like, disable manually a lot of the background app management settings. Mm -hmm. Now, just to talk about a, a bit about the setting, the price, sorry. Uh, it starts at $899 US dollars. It's not on sale yet in the US. Or $999 euros. Um, it's kind of difficult to recommend this phone because, you know, sure, it might be $100 cheaper than the Pixel 8 Pro or S24 Plus at their respective MSRPs. But both those devices frequently go on sale. They offer longer software support and they have more software bells and whistles. On the other hand, there's the OnePlus 12, which offers comparable specs and two more years OS updates plus an additional year security updates at $100 less. I think Asus had an incredibly compelling offering with last year's Zenfone 10, which had flagship tier specs and a compact form factor and a great starting price of 699 US dollars. It's a shame that wasn't more popular, which may be why we have this hybrid Zenfone ROG phone in the form of the Zenfone 11 Ultra. Hopefully they have a smaller Zenfone 11 model in the works. Otherwise, I think it's fair to say that the small phone experiment is only gonna be kept alive by niche third-party OEMs and not big players like Asus. Cool. All right. All right. And that's my review of the Zenfone 11 Ultra. I do think it's an overall solid device with a couple of AI bells and whistles. It's just a tough thing to sell considering the competition this year, you know, from like, it's, it's really hard to beat seven years of support and all the AI features when you, you know, don't have the kinds of capabilities and partnerships with Google that Samsung does or yeah, the kinds of in, in house AI software engineering that Google does. It's a, it's a tough market right now for sure, but I mean, they're, they're in it for a reason. They're an established brand. There's, there's gotta be an audience that's loyal, right? We're 11 generations into the phone, right? So yeah, you're right. I mean, it is hard, you know, if new user comes in and trying to compare the seven years of support or the other stuff, but they've got to they've got to have some level of comp they've got to compete somehow right and so you know the best way they can do it is by making a really pretty phone and throwing in whatever features they can um so i credit asus for putting putting together a compelling uh case with the phone for sure so yeah cool yeah All right. it's been a long time since i had like uh, an asus uh phone experience I'm, I'm talking years at this point so yeah i was curious to kind of hear Kind of how they're doing uh, nowadays. So. It's a big phone. It's a big, big phone. It's a big phone. Chonker. Chonker. I know, indeed. Well, uh, let's uh, uh, let's go in the opposite direction yes. from that, though. Uh, and real chonker. quickly, because we, we are running long. But yeah. um, uh, so Motorola's uh, a, a brand that I've always, I've a lo long time loved what they did in the mid range. And it looks like they've got another year of me continuing my appreciation because uh, the new G series uh, are, is really, really looking interesting. So the Moto G Power 5G, uh, which sells for $299, and the Motor, Moto G 5G, which sells for $199. Um, both have NFC, uh, vegan leather back panels, which is totally a thing now, which is awesome. Totally a thing. <laughs> I know. Remember we joked about it years ago, and now it's a thing? Um, thing. It's got a micro SD slot for those of you who need it, uh, those of you who want it. It's got a courage port for those of you who still love it i don't know why <laughs> um so uh these are really good phone like they look to be really i haven't got my hands on one yet but they look to be really good phones at a really good price um the moto uh, g power 5g has got wireless charging at 15 watts uh which is the first time and honestly find me a mid-ranger or a low-end device that has wireless charging right that's yeah, pretty rare that's it 
Um, yeah. It's got a 6.7 inch 1080p LCD uh, display that runs at 120 hertz. Um, it's running on the MediaTek Density 7, 720 chipset with 8 gig of RAM. It's got dual cameras, 50 megapixel main with OIS, and an 8 megapixel ultra wide with autofocus uh, that can double as the macro camera. And it's got a 5,000 milliamp battery, so that's pretty solid. That's why it's uh, got the power in there. Um, and then the Moto G 5G is a 6.6 inch 720p LCD display with 120 hertz. Um, Qualcomm Snapdragon 4 Gen 1 um, and then uh, with 4 gig of RAM. It's got two cameras, the 50 megapixel main and a 2 megapixel macro, uh, which probably isn't that great. Um, <laughs> and no announcement about their commitment to updates. Uh, so, you know, whatever Motorola's been doing, I assume it's going to be at least that, but we'll see if they jump on the bandwagon of finding more uh, length for the devices. But $199, $299, these are very well-priced mid-rangers. Um, and nice to see the mid-range, like on the low end of price in the mid-range, but still d- delivering the spec. So way to go, Motorola. Yeah. I would like to get my hands on these, so I need to chase down a contact at Motorola. So getting the I'm, wireless I'm still surprised that, um, that only these now, that this range of phones is only now just getting the NFC. And I only know that because my other my, one of my only other friends who has an Android phone who isn't a dev or engineer, uh, has like a kind of lower end Motorola phone. He's like, yeah, I don't have NFC. I'm like, what? Like, uh, how do you not have NFC? It, I just kind of assumed it was kind of like stable. Totally. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Same. I'll tell him about this phone. Uh, yeah. Like wireless charging, I can understand that not being yeah, mid range wire- or low low end, but what? NFC, I just kind of assumed like, oh yeah, NFC. It's, it's a component that's that costs one money of those things incre- that's in everything now. It increases not, the clearly. increases the bomb, right? Makes it yeah. more expensive. Yeah, it, it so. is, yeah. But I don't know, like especially with tap to pay being everywhere, yeah. and it, it just it hit me weird. Like, what do you mean you don't have NFC? And I was like, give me <laughs> almost like give me your damn phone. Let me see what this is. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, um, I just think it's interesting. I just think it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, but you know what else is interesting is, uh, and especially for those of you who are SOC nerds, um, the Snapdragon 8S, not 8, not just 8, 8S Gen 3 uh, has been announced and we got a good idea of some specs. So this is really interesting because we've talked a lot about the Snapdragon, both 8 Gen 2 and Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 recently, um, both being, you know, very successful chipsets, you know, uh, high performing, you know, a lot of good you know, as a system on chip uh, uh, device reviews. And it's kind of interesting to look at this new Snapdragon 8S Gen, sorry, 8S Gen 3, and to look at it from both a kind of, you know, um, specifics of the configuration. I mean, we we don't have to go into like real details, but the most important, I think the most, the thing that you take away from it, it's really interesting because this is meant to be a cheaper SOC, but that still has premium features. And in terms of just like the configuration and the cores it uses, it actually, it's like a blend of both the 8 Gen 2 and the 8 Gen 3, where it's actually using the same cores. And and if I'm getting something wrong, I mean, yell at me, because this is is no longer my area of expertise. Um, But it's using the same cores as the 8 Gen 3, but in a different in a different configuration, also at lower clock speed. So it, it, it very much is sitting in a, in a very interesting place in the middle. Um, and it is meant to be kind of like a more affordable chip, but what is kind of one of the, the, the things that is that they're looking um, to make the 8S Gen 2, Gen, sorry, 8S Gen 3 stand out is AI features because you cannot have a processor that isn't, doesn't have, you know, um, AI specific functionality. Um, and yeah, so what, what, what does, I guess, really distinguish the eight, sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to keep messing this up. The eight S gen two gen. Oh, see, I messed it up again. Yeah. It's, it's oh, easy. Oh, God. Um, sorry. The so eights, the, the eights, the eight S I'm just going to call it the eight S. So there what, you know, uh, what really is interesting about the eight S, you know, in that it is a bit kind of, I guess, lower spec than the eight gen three is that it does have you know, on device um, AI computation. So it is kind of like bridging that gap. I mean, we really just, we recently just talked about how surprisingly the Pixel 8 won't get, is that right? Pixel 8 won't get Gemini Nano, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so if you think about that, whatever that gap is in the hardware, not saying that this processor in particular is plugging that particular hole, but that, you know, there is kind of something to bring AI and all of these new kind of AI computationally intensive things to mid-range phones. So that's kind of basically what it seems like this 8S is kind of, you know, geared towards not Hundo P, you know, high, 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 high end premium flagship phones, but, you know, something in the middle, something a little more affordable, but that can still handle AI. Um, it also supports the Wi-Fi 7 standard. 
Um, it can support, you know, Q, uh, QHD plus displays at 144 hertz uh, and also 4K at 60 hertz. Um, the actual video it supports is a little bit down. So that's where, you know, the, where the, there's going to be some trade offs. And some of that is like, for example, in the video support. Um, but there's plenty of other nice premium features. Um, if you're like an image processing nerd, there is triple 18 bit image system, uh, Im sorry, image signal processing uh, paired with the hexagon neural processing unit, which actually could lend to very you know advanced features um they have this always sensing feature that should help with things like face unlock and oh my god my chair just decided to break under me uh oh. qr codes oh my gosh i'm sweating now uh and also <laughs> <laughs> the combination of the image signal processing and this neural processor should you know allow kind of more midi rangey phones uh upper pre like lower premium phones uh boost image quality in dark uh, conditions and also do some Outpainting, which you can think of, and which this article explained as um, uncropping, uh, kind of not in like not like the opposite of enhance, where you get more on the outside. Anyway, um, AI features um, and also still allow a maximum camera resolution of 2000 MP. I think I wrote, wait, did I say 200, 2000? I missed a zero. I think it was, it's 200, sorry, not 2000, 200 MP. Uh, and still bring you some gaming you know, beefiness with the Adreno GPU. So yeah, for all of you processor nerds out there, the 8S Gen 2 has some really interesting stuff. And I, I think it's really cool to see like trying to bring, you know, the fan the fancy features that possess and the AI to not just expensive ass thousand dollar phones. Uh, so we'll see what happens and see what phones um, have this. There is already kind of like declared, uh, you know, um, support for this uh, or rather uh, kind of uptake of this SOC from brands like Honor, um, Realme and Xiaomi. So maybe we'll hear more about some 8S Gen 3 phones in the future. You and I'm going to fix my chair real quick. My you, God, that was You brought up a scary. really good question during that, uh, Wayne, while yeah, you fix your sorry. chair. What is it called <laughs> when it expands the photo right like yeah I guess, is that generative i guess it's generative ai it, is that it, just what it is or it is it is generative because it's making the picture extrapolation ex that's yes, what it is yes 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 exactly yeah. that's the correct term extrapolation. Out filling out filling because, is another out because google google for remember google, out painting, yeah google out, out painting yeah google photos did that to my remember the video example yeah, i showed you where it extrapolated my daughter's arm and and created mm. it that it wasn't in the video even though she does have an arm um but uh <laughs> Yeah, I was because like you're right. Cropping is one thing, but when you're adding to it, it's kind of generative yeah. ex extrapolation. extrapolation There's got to yeah. be a more. I actually did a word. live demo of that the feature yeah. in question basically on the Galaxy S24 when yeah. we had that episode for that review. Like when I tilted, there's one image where I tilted it a little bit, and then it used generative AI to fill in. Like because when you when you rotate a photo, right, it doesn't have the corners like mm -hmm. information in the corners anymore. It used um, it's generative AI to fill in that bits of information and created a fully landscape photo again. Wow. Right. That's amazing. Living in the future and it now just future. not but the I, premium phones. But I will, yeah, but I, yeah, I will say too. like bringing AI to the masses, this is how it's got to happen, right? It's going to, yeah. you know, when, when you start seeing these features in the mid rangers from not, you know, from other manufacturers, like this is how it's got to happen. So cool. yeah. yeah, time and time again, the, the, the elite premiums get it first and then it starts to I don't say trickle down, but you know, starts to the the technology gets cheaper and the and and more apt for kind of the res, re, restricted resources of smaller phones. Okay, right. Wireless charging coming to the Moto G. <laughs> what about NFC, right? man? See? Yeah, you NFC. With your uh, NFC. Forget about that one. But yeah. <laughs> um. So this is an interesting rumor. I will go ahead and preface it by that. But I will say before getting the rumor the apple watch okay um very much steadfast when it comes to committing to the square slash rectangular design and remember in the beginning i remember in the beginning it was a point of contention for a lot of people it was like oh my god that watch doesn't look like a watch it looks like a a, a phone screen on your wrist like i want a watch that looks like a watch and it kind of divided people into separate camps if you remember early on Samsung, and I have one here to show off here, Samsung did the square thing. This isn't their first smartwatch that I have in my hand if you're watching the, the video uh, version of this show. This is their second, this is the Samsung Gear Live. And boy, is it a piece of junk. But um, <laughs> anyways, they these things have clearly come a long way in 10 years. Let me just say, if you saw this in person, you would absolutely agree with me. We could spend a whole other episode on why this thing is a piece of junk. But 
uh, Samsung did the square thing and then they switched to the round thing, which, you know, I've got the OnePlus uh, Watch 2 on my wrist. It's round. A lot of my favorite wearables have been round. Rumor has it, according to Sam Mobile, that Samsung is considering a return to the squarish form factor. Dun, dun, dun. Um, still very much a maybe, according to the source. So this is just kind of more like a thought experiment than anything. Like, should Samsung try this? Is and if Samsung does this, do we think Samsung's going to be like, nope, all of our future phones are going to be square? Or is this just Samsung saying, well, actually, now at this point, things have kind of iterated and, and grown enough that maybe we can offer both. Give people options. Uh, yeah. Jason, do you remember the Guatcher? The Guatcher, yeah. What on earth? The Guatcher. The, Before was the Guatcher, it was the was Watch. That, I remember. Was it LG? Yeah. The, the G Watch oh, R. Oh, the Guatch. Yeah, LG G Watch, yeah. yes. The, yeah, the Guatcher R. Yeah, LG G Watch R. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's funny when this story hit up. I was just like, "Oh, there aren't square. Like, like square makes sense. Like, I would wear a square phone, a watch." Uh, like, I will say, square, square, square phone screens are probably easier to dev for than freaking circles. Oh, probably because, so. I mean, yeah. because yeah. UI, yeah, where do you put the UI when everything's circular? <laughs> it's hard. I mean, has that been a hindrance for wearables on Android? I mean, de developers have obviously they've learned over time because we're ten years, eleven years into this whole wearable thing i think maybe I even think, longer than that i think generally yes i i think generally yes but there is i mean i'm just thinking about it off the top of my head like yeah i, I mean just in general wearables are are such a smaller have so, so much less real estate it's going to be yeah. hard in general um yeah. and that's part of it is just that what what features can you can you provide that have utility to someone on such a small screen? Yeah. I, I think, uh, to be fair, the use case, but uh, the difference between a small square versus a small circle is not trivial, but it's probably like the same. I think there's like a general challenge of, man, this is a, not very many pixels. Um, but I, I do think there is probably something about um, circular screens. It, it kind of makes me think of the Motorola uh, flat tire a little bit where, Ooh, yeah. it, and it, this is kind of different, right? Huh. Because now, now circular, uh, you know, um, wearables have the full screen, but that feels kind of like in the same genre of, okay, like the, there, there are some like physical limitations that the UI has to sort of get around and play with. And I can't imagine that, you know, just like, you know, sloped, um, or circular size rather just give you even less space. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course, it's not just you can't just pick square or circle. You have to support everything. And heaven forbid if someone yeah. comes up with a triangular phone, but that's not a bad idea if someone wants to do that. I mean, I'll 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 take a look at it. Um, but you know that that's yeah. Um, I just wonder. But I don't know. A square phone might be marginal. It would be it would be marginally to moderately easier to develop for than a circular screen. I will say that. Interesting stuff. Yeah. I would I like just, to see it. I was just like more, more uh, choice, more opportunity, I guess. Right. Um, would you like to see a triangular watch? <laughs> of course, this is not a smart watch, <laughs> but it is triangular. Sorry. And I would love to see what developers did with that. Oh, that would, that'd be, that'd so be cool. a nightmare. That'd be very cool. I, especially like depending on how you orient it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my I'm goodness. sorry. I'm just imagining that. That would be horrible. Yeah. Now I kind of want to do that just for funsies. Just make yeah. a, a triangular watch face. I was like, somebody, somebody's got, had to have just like, yeah, sure, I'll do the triangular smartwatch so that we can be the one example that appears yeah. when people search. Uh, it will always be talked about, right? Yeah, we'll it, always, hey, yeah. You know. always be the first. All right, well, the round out hardware, we were talking about Google I.O. earlier in the show, and uh, it's also the time of year for the uh, Pixel A series to be coming, and we've uh, we've had uh, some leaks coming from the Pixel 8a. We talked about it a little last week. Uh, Pixel 8a is getting a little more leaky, which always means that it's, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. Yep. Um, the latest leaks are that the uh, this, the OL, OLED display will refresh refresh up to 120 hertz. Last year it was 90 hertz, so that'll make it a little more buttery, right? I think that's the term you use there, Michelle. Um, and then uh, it's got 1400 nits peak HDR brightness. Uh, we'll have a Display Port output enabled in Android 14 QPR 3 beta uh, and running the Tensor G3, which is the same as the 8 series. So the 8A get a little more leaky, a little more real. So we'll see. I uh, love that display port. So, all right. No upgrades to the camera, says the article as well. No upgrades to the cameras. Yeah, you know, the camera's um, always pretty, has been pretty spot on. So. Yep. And then uh, more preparation 
coming for Google I.O., I only assume, uh, because the YouTube music team has been, YouTube music product team has been very busy, it seems, <laughs> seems lately. Um, a whole bunch of stuff happened uh, with YouTube music lately. Um, first and foremost, the long-awaited song search is finally coming to YouTube music. Um, this is similar to a feature that rolled out uh, late last year for YouTube. Uh, it's a dedicated button next to the search bar, and it shows a voice or song choice, uh, and you can hum the song or play a song to find it in your library. Um, interestingly enough, also Google Play Music had much better song search than YouTube Music does. YouTube Music song search is not very good in the app, and so I'm glad to see more focus around this uh, mm -hmm. to zero in on the song you want to listen to. Um, also, uh, YouTube Music is getting a trim silence feature, according to our friends over at 9to5Google, uh, who looked at the uh, APK of the app for a clue. Um, and those of you who listen to podcasts know that trim silence is a feature that's often found in many podcast apps, much like Pocket Cast, my podcast app of choice. Um, the code string says, quote, skip stretches of silence during episodes. Uh, and, you know, what else is called an episode other than a podcast? So I guess YouTube Music is shoring things up uh, for the podcast stuff. I hope to see a little more at Google I.O. about YouTube Music, about the podcast support, about the whole product in general. Um, so maybe it's uh, it's starting to happen. So mm. cool. Still a dedicated YouTube Music user, yeah, Bob Richards. I'm I'm still using it. It's my. I mean, it's just all there. I don't know. Yeah, you so. get used to it over time. I, I'm sure. I did recently. I did just take. I still had the hundred plus gig of my Google Play Music uh, takeout download uh, in a folder on my desktop, and I finally just moved that to an external hard drive. Just to, like, like I clearly just, don't need this. Like no, I, I'm gonna get to it one day. I have all the screenshots <laughs> and everything, but like I just need to get to it. So yeah, so. <laughs> I have to run a div between what was in Google Play Music versus what is in my hard drive collection, and then like, but I who has the time? So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is the time spent doing that. Is it really worth it? Uh, like, it might be. I don't know. Depends maybe, on how I, maybe depends, not. Depends on how OCD I want to get. But yeah, yeah. there you go. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Well, speaking of music, Spotify um, is doing apparently, or, or probably going to do. Uh, no, this is launched. Doing what I hated YouTube Music for doing, which was adding uh, music videos. Yep. They're going to be. They're launching a beta of the feature in select countries. U.S. is not one of them. So not for now are you getting it in the U.S., but eventually you probably will. Uh, but there's going to be, similar to YouTube Music, there's going to be a slider that essentially allows you to switch between, you know, the music version and uh, the music video. But I also realized, like, my hang-up on this was very particular to a certain reason, and that's because at the time my daughters were younger than they are now, as we all are, because time and um they're they were much more likely to seek out <laughs> the music device that we had for yep. just music and use it as a as another conduit for watching a screen of that, some sort that's my biggest problem now is that like yeah. i've got the i've got the nest hub in the kitchen and the kids yell songs and then it pulls up the music video and then they just stand there and watch the 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 cartoon when I, when yeah. like where if it puts up the dumb song from despicable me they'll dance around the kitchen and have a dance party yeah but as soon as the video starts you know so um spotify and youtube jason do not care because no. gu guess what earns more money video uh, ads Video oh, ads no, have higher true. CPM than audio ads. This is all, the only reason why they're doing it. So. Oh, see, and I thought it was just like one of those. Yeah, I mean, that, nope. that obviously makes sense from a business perspective. But I always just kind of thought like, well, music and music videos, they kind of do go hand in hand. And I mean, if you've got if you're listening to a song and it's just as easy to also play the, the video that is attached to that song, then why wouldn't you? But your your reason makes a lot more sense. Well, and, and like, and I'll ch I challenge that also, and that like, as someone who grew up watching music videos, who like my favorite bands I found out about by watching 120 minutes on MTV, yeah, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, 30 mm -hmm. years, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. um, way too long. Welcome like, to the show, old man. The the concept, the the paradigm of sitting and watching a music video is much different than yeah. listening to records or listening to a playlist or listening to a mix as we used to call it um and that sort of thing and yeah. they 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 youtube and spotify treat them the same which i think is not right and yeah. not and not accurate um but to them it's monetizable that's what it comes out yeah. to 
So it, it is funny when I would when um, YouTube Music first integrated videos, uh, and and a lot, a lot of times also in that vein, music videos are a little more cinematic yeah, than the, they used than to the, be. <laughs> the music. And I'm doing a workout, I'm listening to a song, all of a sudden I start hearing like car noise or street noise, and I'm like, what happened? And it's because the music video version got like rolled into my playlist, and I'm you know I'm I'm in like the 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 thirty second to two minute intro to someone's cinematic masterpiece that when I yes. just wanted the song, which is fine. Like, again, that's like a different setting, right? I want like music, as you said, music and video are obviously and less obviously different experiences. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Silly. But anyway, yeah. it's a very, very big complaint. Yeah. Monetize, yeah monetize, good monetization. Point. Good point. All right. Round us out, Michelle. Yeah. So, um, if you're not familiar, if you ever try to download and import a uh, a pass a digital pass that you've gotten in the .pk pass format, which is the format that Apple developed for its own Apple Wallet system, you may have noticed that you've had to use a third-party app to convert it so that you can import it into Google Wallet. Well, soon you won't have to use a third-party app anymore because Google Wallet is finally rolling out support for importing and converting digital passes that are saved in Apple's PK pass format. And uh, one user on Telegram told me that they got this and they shared a video with me that shows them importing a generic PK pass file into Google Wallet. And then other users chimed in responding to me saying that they also see it on their device. I don't have this yet, but um, from what users are telling me, this is slowly rolling out and a, a lot of users are able to add passes in this format now. Now you probably don't see this format a lot anymore. Like it really depends on where you live, what services you use, what um you know like public transit systems you use what airlines you use like it really depends there are still some services out there that don't support google wallet they only send you their passes in the pk pass format and if that describes you then you may find this incredibly useful if not you probably will never use this feature interesting I don't know if I find that useful or not, but we'll find <laughs> out. Exactly. I've never encountered a yeah, PK pass useful. file out in the Neither wild. Neither have I. Like I didn't even always... know. I was looking. I was like, I was just looking to see. Like, I've never heard of that format either. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Excellent. Cool. All right, that's app news. Now we got some feedback. Got some emails. Contact at androidfaithful.com is how you can get involved with us uh, in the feedback section, and uh, we'll start with you. And what you got? Yeah, and we've got a really great tip from listener Linda. I just discovered the other day that you can pinch to Zoom in Google Messages to make the text bigger. I don't think I ever saw this anywhere. It makes a big difference to my almost 60-year-old eyes, and it may help some others. I don't know if it's just a pixel thing, but it works on my 7 Pro. Linda from Long Island. Uh, and yeah, I, I do want to note this is actually, I, I love that you pointed this out, Linda, and it's interesting because like, I, I know you can like kind of zoom to, you can pinch the zoom on a lot of different, you know, content and apps like Gmail and Chrome or whatever. But usually what happens, well, often what happens is that the text itself will zoom, but the UI itself will not. And I think, and I, I did try to say that, but Google messages does a good job at kind of making every, like everything kind of like, I don't know, just fit. I don't know. It just seems like a more fluid experience. Anyway, it was, it's a really good tip and yeah, it's, it's done like very well you don't have to go into your settings or nothing so thank you so much linda yeah i mean it's it, it, it's another Yay. case of like these are one of those things that i feel like how what is the percentage of features that are on our devices and on these apps that users don't know about right and like yeah. you, you stumble on it by accident like that's the same thing like i did uh, once i did it by accident i'm like oh everything's big now and i quickly made it small again yeah but um but for someone who you know has poor eyesight or needs you know things bigger mm -hmm. but like you know like be, having that level of control is great how do you popularize that how do you get the word out about that it's just it's it's you know i, I find it I, I this is something that like i knew about but like realize that not everybody does and so it's always good to share these tips when we get them and little hacks and little things that we know our phones can do that the other person might not know about so yeah yeah yeah, my wife swears by that, and I think she stumbled on it too because I I wasn't aware of it when she discovered it. She's like, "Did you know that it did this?" And it's like she just accidentally did it, and then it's like, "Wait a minute, I can make this all bigger." Yeah, why not? Cool. Well, thank you, Long Island represent yo. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> all right, Michelle. And our yeah, our next email comes in from Richard from Manchester. Um, Writing in, hey all, love the show. I have an issue with Google Maps I wonder if you can help me with. We often go on walks in the city and I use Google Maps to help us get around. 
My problem is when I need to use two hands to push my wife's wheelchair, my phone somehow will get uh, trapped accidentally and go into things like, sorry, tapped accidentally and go into things like connection settings. So when I try and glance at my phone to see what turn to take, we have to stop and sort it out. Is there a way to lock my screen while using maps to navigate it uh, so it can not be accidentally tapped and take me to random screens? Keep up the good work. Richard from Manchester. So this is a, I thought this was a great question. I looked into it a little earlier because I, 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 I'm not sure. Maybe I couldn't, couldn't quite figure out the logic, but I know you have control over when the display times out, but you also have control over when the screen locks and by going into the settings for both display timeout and screen lock, you could do a kind of thing where the screen lock af uh, happens after 15 seconds, but the screen doesn't time out for 10 minutes and therefore the screen is locked and you can still see the display. I don't know if that will work. I didn't test it. And a part of me was worried that it might not work, but um, I do know, I, I did see that there are some apps out there that allow you to take more control over the screen. There's one called screen alive, mm. keep screen on. Um, and there's another one called um, I think touch lock. Yeah. Touch lock screen lock, um, which all lets you fuss with the settings to keep your display on and avoid the screen from being touched. The challenge here though, is, really a security issue because if you have locked if your phone is locked and you can't interface with it how do you unlock you know like it's it, those are the kind of the but, challenges right and so i think um what richard is looking for most mostly to keep the phone on the app maps app without navigating away to another app and one way you can do that is with the built-in screen pinning feature it's something you have to go into settings and enable but then once you do you can swipe up to the recents menu and then long press on the icon and tap pin app. I think I forgot exactly mm -hmm. what it's called, but you yeah. can pin it to where um, you have to like consciously do a combination of buttons to exit from the screen pinning mode so that you'll stay on the maps app no matter what you press oh. until you do this combination of gestures. I didn't even know you could it. do that. Wait, so how do you do that again? So, you, so you're in the app, so I'm, I'm in maps, right? It's You have to enable it. You first have to go to settings. It, it differs on every OS. Um, like I'm right now, I have a Zen phone, so what I say now won't apply to Pixel. Okay, but users. he's he's on a Pixel Seven, right? He's on a Pixel. It should yeah. be like an app pinning. App pinning, yeah. So I went, I went into so, so yeah, yeah. So I want to so make enable sure enable app pinning. So go to yeah, go to go to go to settings and search it's, settings and just type in yeah. pin 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 p i n and the first and one then, that comes comes up is app pinning. And then go to the recents menu, and then long press on the icon. There should be an option to pin. Hang on, you're going too fast, Michelle. Wait, wait, hold on. Go, go to. <laughs> after on. you enable screen, after you enable app pinning, swipe up to the recent screen. Just wait, wait. You're still going too fast. So <laughs> tap on app pinning in, in settings, and then and it, what it'll do is it'll take you to the more security and privacy screen, and scroll you down to the bottom, and it'll flash app pinning, which is at the very, very bottom. You tap that. And then you flip the switch to say use app pinning and it will tell you when app is pinned personal data may be accessible pinned apps may open other apps only use app pinning with people you trust so hit okay once you do that now michelle what do you do <laughs> now you swipe up to go to the recents menu okay. swipe up and hold like jason is showing on video yep then you long press on the app icon and then you tap pin that's so cool and that'll pin the app to your screen um, so you won't be able to exit it until you perform the gesture. I forgot what yeah, gesture what it is to it exit it. Um, unpin, swipe up and hold. To, oh, to swipe unpin. up and hold. So if I try yeah. and swipe out, ah, I don't want to show Got that. It. Um, but yes, swipe up and hold, and that will release it. And so what that will do is that will keep that app pinned so you can't go to any other app. But if his phone gets tapped, it's still getting tapped within that app. But still, at least you're within there, right? Yeah, so, at least you're still in Google yeah. Maps. Like, it's not going to stop you from accidentally exiting navigation in Google Maps. But at least it'll keep you on Google Maps. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the solve. Way to go, Michelle. That's awesome. So, there you go. Um, very cool. Yeah. I love helping people. What was the version of Android where app pinning was introduced? Because I remember that was a that was a big uh, deal. App. Is that marshmallow? It's really old. Yeah, it is. It's pretty a really old. old feature. Oh man. Yeah, that's too funny. All right, cool, uh, excellent. All right, lollipop. Oh, oh lollipop. Hey. Feature Gosh, was introduced dang. by Google. Lollipop. 
There you oh, go. Lollipop, lollipop. Um, that's too funny. Do you remember Jason Lollipop? Anyway, um, okay. <laughs> so we got one more, one more email, um, uh, which comes in uh, from Chris from Washington D.C. Uh, and Chris writes in and says, as a faithful user of Pixel phones, and before that Motorola, I am wondering what does one give up if you switch to nothing OnePlus, Samsung, or Motorola phones now? It is easy to compare the hardware spec differences, but I know Google offers things on the software level. For example, how does it feel to lose the spam call filtering and call screening? Are there any other software service benefits for being on a Pixel that are not replicated on the other devices? On the other hand, are there software service benefits to being on one of the other devices that are not obvious? Since each of you frequently change phones, have you noticed anything you missed when you have left one phone for another other than camera differences? And I thought this was a great question given the four of us, right? Because I've been riding the Pixel train for several years now, and despite loving the OnePlus Open, I was afraid to get off of it. When I know you've bounced between Samsung to the mm -hmm. Pixel Fold and that sort of thing, Michelle, right? You're, you're, I think you're, you're driving, you're driving the Zen phone lately as your daily, right? Um, so, like, I'm really curious what you all think is to like, what are the like, what are the pros and cons to not being on Pixel versus being on one of the other phones? I mean, I know it's Samsung; they've got this whole ecosystem you could tap into if you want to, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot um, of times the features are are similar, just named different things. Yeah, but I do think that the 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 call filtering, the call screening, those are features that I notice when I don't have them when I'm on a different phone. Because when I'm on the yeah. Pixel, I absolutely get that screening stuff, and I don't on other devices, and I appreciate having it. Yeah. For most features, there's going to be some equivalent, or at least yeah. some functional equivalent that has most like 80, 85 percent. It totally. goes 85 of the way there on what you've previously had in your old phone. Some features just aren't available on other devices. Like, for example, one of the annoyances that I've dealt with on the Zen Phone 11 and actually most other devices that aren't Pixel is the fact that when I want to select something in an app, right, on Pixel, it's easy. You can just swipe up to the recent screen and then it uses OCR. So you can select anything on the app that you're in. On the Zen phone, I have to kind of take a screenshot of it, open it, that screenshot in Google Lens, and then I can select the text that I want to. Uh, copy or highlight or whatever, right? On the Pixel, now on the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 7, or in the Galaxy S24, you can use circle to search to select text on screen, which makes it really easy. And I do it all. I do that all the time, right? Selecting text on screen because I want to highlight something and save it in a note or share it with someone else. But it's a little bit annoying to do that on a Zen phone because it's just not available it's, to do. It's, it's so ironic, Michelle, that you said that's your example because here I am staying loyal to the pixel now through like three generations and i still don't have circle of search on my pixel 8 pro but uh, yeah. yeah and 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 i mean ron if you had a uh s24 you might have circle to search <laughs> right, exactly now. and I, so I think true. it's interesting because especially now with some of those pixel features and as we're seeing samsung is kind of now partnering a lot more closely uh and kind of taking on some of these like previously pixel pixel uh exclusive features into themselves so I don't know, like for me, like even less, um, I think my reasons for really enjoying being back on Pixel Fold are more dev related. I like being and uh, more enthusiast dev related. Like I like being able to be part of the QPRs. I like seeing what comes on first. And I, I like for, as a dev just having a Pixel, a Pixel phone because it is stock Android. And again, like because I can kind of get the betas, it allows me to do my job better. But there's so much on Samsung, uh, even before all of the Galaxy AI features that I don't know. I kind of miss now because it's highly customizable. So it, I, I don't have not much at this point, especially with the with things, the the way that things are going with the assistants and AI. So, man. Yeah, it is really. That point. It it is hard. There's so many features now on like Google's whatever they they don't have a name for the OS and the Pixel. There's so many different features on Zen UI. So many different features in yeah. One UI. It is so hard to list all of them and say, here's an equivalent in Google's OS. Here's an equivalent in, in Zen UI. You're going to be missing out on some features. You're going to have to go digging around. You're going to have to like ask on forums and like watch reviews to figure out. You're just going to have to. One thing I really recommend, it's for some reason a lot of people don't seem to do. When you get a new phone, just look through the settings. Go through yeah. all the settings one time. You'll probably find one or two things you didn't know existed. A lot of people just set up their phones and then just download their apps and that's it. Just yeah. go through settings sometime at least. You'll do yourself a favor, save a lot of time down the line. 
Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting stuff. So if you want to weigh in on the pros or cons of being on a Pixel or on another uh, manufacturer's device, email us at contact at androidfaithful.com. We want to hear from you. If you've got other tips you want to share with other listeners, please email us in as well. It's always great to hear from everybody. Uh, we thank everybody for staying in touch with us. So indeed we do thank you everybody for sending in all your feedback thank you for watching and listening and sticking with us to the very end we have reached the end of this episode of android faithful this is the moment in the show when we dance no not quite yet this is the moment where we talk about what we have going on we'll start with you michelle what you got so um if you want to hear more about what's happening in android 15 Follow me on Twix, Mastodon, Threads, etc. at Michelle Rahman. And support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Michelle Rahman. This is a great time to join our Discord community because we have a lot of cool stuff coming up with respect to Android 15. And speaking of which, I'm actually doing a presentation tomorrow about what to expect to Android 15. Um, the, I'm doing a presentation at the AOSP and AOS, or Android Automotive OS, March meetup. So if you want to hear more, you can go to this link that I'll send Jason right now. And you can hear me talk about what to expect in Android 15. I got this big presentation all ready to go. It's going to be happening tomorrow at, I think, it'll be 3 p.m. Eastern is when I'm going to be on. Hmm. The AOSP and the AAOS cool. March Meetup found at meetup.com. Go there and search for that title, and you can find it. The URL is very long. But um, yeah, it's on the Meetup site. Excellent. Very cool. That's pretty sweet. Love that meetup site, right? Yeah. Or meetup app, right? Friend of the show. Right behind there. On. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Wynn, what about you? Uh, let's see. Um, I am an Android developer. I I do and have talked about technical things related to Android development, and you can find all of my talks and related content and code on my website, randomlytyping.com. And, you know, if you want to follow me on the interwebs and on the social medias, your best shot, honestly, is Instagram at Queen Code Monkey. But I hope I'm Queen Code Monkey in most other places, uh, and so that's me. But, um, yeah, mostly Instagram. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but, yeah, follow the show. Bye, T-shirt. My t shirt. My t shirt, please. I'm going to buy one. I'm going to buy all the, um, all the merch. All the merch. All the <laughs> varieties. Anyway. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ron? <laughs> uh, yeah, just follow me at RonXO across Twitter, or not, tw uh, not Twitter, all social media. I'm at RonXO in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and then I'm most active on Instagram these days. Uh, but reminder go to androidfaithful.threadless.com and get an Android Faithful t shirt. There you go. You can make it your own. Thanks to everybody who's already uh, bought one during the live stream. We've seen the orders coming in. Yeah, it's amazing. Wonderful, you guys. AndroidFaithful.threadless.com. More to come. Very nice. Oh, and, and why not throw it in there as well? Bit.ly, Sarkeo, <laughs> Google I.O. We're giving you a lot of work today. Sure. Yes. And we work. appreciate the work that you do. If so you would like... There. If you'd like to show your interest in attending a live Android Faithful recording and slash party, uh, go to bit.ly slash AF Google IO, all lowercase AF Google IO. Uh, there you go. So there you go. All <laughs> right. Times. As for me, just go to yellowgoldstudios.com. I am putting up, uh, oh, that went full screen. I didn't mean for that. Um, putting up new content. I've got, I'm, I'm finishing up my review of the OnePlus Watch 2. The reality is I've got so much so much stuff to review Even that I'm like swimming in it right now. I'm, I have to catch <laughs> up. It's going to take me a couple of months to get through this stuff. But... I've got a review of the OnePlus Watch 2 coming at least. So yellowgoldstudios.com, you can find that. You can also find uh, episodes of AI Inside with me and Jeff Jarvis. The podcast, the video version anyways, hits hits the, uh, the channel. Uh, and thank you for your support there. But we have reached the end of this episode of Android Faithful. We do this podcast every Tuesday evening. You can, of course, subscribe by going to our website. We do have one, androidfaithful.com. You can find all the information you need to subscribe in the many different ways. We've got all of our episodes listed there. It's a whole, it's like a playground for Android Faithful fans. So go there, check that out. Also, if you want to support us on Patreon, you can. Once again, patreon.com slash androidfaithful takes you there so you can support us directly. We appreciate if you do that. And other than that, you know, really just look for Android Faithful in all the different places online, all the social media platforms. You'll probably find us in one way or another. And um, yeah, just let, you, let us know 
what you think of the show. Contact at AndroidFaithful.com. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Woo! Fun okay. times. Fun times. Oh, I was very happy to be able to pull this this little wow. gem. Oh my from, god, that was amazing! The archives. You know, my, my Guacher like, is lost to the uh, to the to the ages. I, I haven't seen that thing in years. You know what was so horrible about this? I wonder if I even have the charging. Um, oh, do you remember those horrible charging it? things? Oh, god. because yeah, because they didn't snap magnetically they snapped like based on like a plastic kind of like framing that would God, snap into place PTSD. and on this particular watch i don't even think you can see it on this camera but the little area where it was supposed to snap into it was a tiny little prong that just broke off one time when i tried I to take it off of the uh, the charger and so it doesn't even snap onto the charger anymore it just it's flops too right off yeah this thing's uh well, all right that, that ended up being a long one we yeah, much, it was a long we, one. We we're much longer on Nintendo than I thought we would. I thought that was going to be a quick yeah. one. <laughs> Definitely would. We all have feelings about it. I think that's so. what did it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, all right, let's all pick, right. A, let's pick AF, a title. AF.showbot.com if you want to help us. .tv. Or sorry, yeah, .tv. There you go. AF.showbot.tv. And you can help us vote. Vote for your favorite titles of the ones that are shown there. Right now at the top, it's a tie between ser searching for Circle to search and planning Android Faithful's Google I.O. Gala. <laughs> going, going, going very literal right there. Um, in second place is remembering the pre-Pandy days. <laughs> We've lost the mouse. That's what I would vote for. <laughs> We've lost the mouse. <laughs> Uh, video killed the radio ads. A lot of video killed us, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Merch meetup merch and marketing. Meet up and marketing. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Merchandising. Merchandising. Get a bucket. A eight is leaking. I like that one. <laughs> Get a bucket. A A is leaking. That watch is circle to nowhere. <laughs> no, no. Circle to nowhere. It's good yeah, Ron's circle to nowhere. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, searching for circle to search just got more votes. Sir, I mean, it's a good one. Searching it for good circle one. to yeah. search. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Cool. That works for me. Good job, y'all. Love it. Oops, that was the wrong thing. I'll just type it up there. Searching for circle. Jason, how is the search. new Mac Studio? Uh, great. You know, I'm still kind of going through the thing where like I'm using it and then I realize, oh, I haven't installed that yet. Right. And, you know, I spent a lot of the weekend installing a lot of random, you know, things that I needed to get onto it and so yeah. that I can use it. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I hope that it means that this machine ends up working better than it had been because I was using it for so much and now it'll be more dedicated to just this, this stuff up here. So. So far, so good, though. I did re restart this machine right before the podcast. Yeah, I probably have, just need to do that every time. Yeah, you didn't have any issues. It's so. just a pain in the butt because I have to sign into everything again. And uh, with two factor, two factor makes signing in such a. Why do a you have pain. to sign into everything again? You do? Is your like, browser clearing all the cookies every yeah. time you. Oh, I think I've always had my browser do that. Oh, yeah. No, don't do that. That's at probably all. why. Turn that off, dude. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If the PC is staying at home all the time, you don't have to worry. Yeah, about that. no, that's true. That's yeah. true. I mean, talking about the computer yeah. gremlins come at night, and then you know, I don't know. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. I've just always had it set that way. I was like, oh, that's maximum. Oh security. no, yeah, turn that off, dude. You don't need that. It's like, God forbid, if I could like. Like I'm tired of logging into Google, right? Like I, I need to tell Google, like I am in a house, no one else is touching this. Like, yeah, yeah. Keep me signed true. in, you know. Like, <laughs> it's, right. I'm not on a laptop. I'm on a desktop for Christ's sake, you know. Like, it's not like it's like I'm gonna take it to the city and leave it or something like that. It's like I, yeah, know, yeah. Like, is this a is this a private fixed computer? Yes. Keep my keep me logged in for thirty days or whatever it is instead of like the every what is it three and a half days <laughs> clinton asked a good question if uh, if you all have plans for the eclipse 
on April 8th. I'm actually going to be driving up to Austin because Austin is in the path of t totality. Yeah. Oh, cool. That day. I'm going to be chasing my children to try to get them to not look at it directly. Or wear, or wear the glasses that I need to track down to get them for them. So. My sister and my brother-in-law are going to Pittsburgh uh, because uh, they have family up there. But And I was going to join them, but I come back the 7th. I, I'm not getting back on a plane. Yeah. Uh, so. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be gone for the next two weeks, y'all. Maybe, But I'll probably join as a listener. Uh, oh. Totally normal audience member. That'll be fun. So yeah, you're out the next two weeks. Yeah. Ron, you're maybe out next week. Is I'm that right? Maybe out next week. I might have a friend in town, uh, and she's uh, uh, pulling together a dinner. And if it happens, I would I would like to go. So yeah, um, of course. So which means I'm going to miss yeah, our guest, which is one of my favorite guests. But he'll understand considering yeah. the legacy, Jason, of you missing him previously. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> only turn about tur only turn about is fair turn about is fair play. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm sad yeah. I'm missing anyway. Yeah, no, both it's, weeks. It's very funny. Like I thought that I thought that once the other uh, commitment aspect of Twit went away, that I'd be like, oh, I'll do the show whenever I want. But now I'm like, no, I have to like, like something came up on it. Something was coming up on a Tuesday, and my wife was like, oh, but you know, oh, well, you don't have to do the show. I'm like, no, I want to do the show. Like, <laughs> <laughs> By choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but there, there is more flexibility. Where it's you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's four of us. It's all no, good. no, I, I know. That's why. Yeah. That's why when this dinner came up, I'm like I can go. But yeah. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Cool, y'all. Well, sure. I certainly have a few edits to make here. Um, it was well, the intro. It was the intro because yeah. mice grew up, and then uh, the and then there was mouse. Yeah. yeah, the kind my of mouse, mouse thing, yeah. which I can edit around. I mean, I'm That's sorry, I didn't problem. mean I didn't mean to throw you off at the top of the show. I, no, I it's my fault. You. Um, my husband happened to hand me a spin drift roll so quick, and I thought I had the five seconds, and then I kind of I'm forgot sorry. to unmute. <laughs> no, 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 it's speaking fine. of throwing I, you off balance. How's your chair? Like it's yeah. fine. So um, I adjusted the back and then it just hadn't settled into the height notch that I had it in. So as I was okay. leaning on it, that's when it kind of went boom, and I'm like, oh, okay. That's funny. I'm more secure now, but it also scared the shit out of me. So. <laughs> Took you by surprise. Uh, too funny. I don't think there were any any others, right? No, those are the only those two, two. The only two notes okay. I had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will do that. Cool. All right. Well, good time, friends. Yep. Good times. Nice hanging out with you. Have a good couple of weeks, Win. Yeah, Thank have a you. great trip. We're going to miss you. Oh, yeah, Jason, let me send you the Amazon albums links so that you can just include them, I guess, in the show notes. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And you how know, it's great. funny. Do what? we include links in the show notes? We don't. You can. We just... I, you, I used to. Yeah, you can. Oh. Yeah. That's oh. so funny. I've just editor... been writing the names. I haven't been including the links. So oh, I should you should. Yeah. The, the, um, the editor uh in a cast and then also on the website both enable it like it, it yeah you should be able to do that no problem so were you just doing it in a cast and then you and copy then, it and paste it into the website and no the the, would... the rss ingest includes the html oh okay so it should All carry right. over okay yeah, i'll start so. doing that yeah, yeah sorry yeah. about that no i think it uh, um the only the right only now. place i would make sure um you the the survey link and the t-shirt link um add those explicitly to the youtube description so. Oh right. Well, yeah. because the YouTube description doesn't get the no. Yeah. So you just we're just copying and pasting that. So I would just explicitly and YouTube allows links, but they have to be fully written out. They can't be coded. Yeah. You know, right. So. Right. Right. I showed the so links just, in the private chat. Yeah. So just put just put um uh just put them at the top of the show too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Top uh, the top of the, like under the description, Jason, on YouTube. Just drop it in there. So. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, let's let's say goodnight to everybody. Thanks all. Good night, everybody. Thank you for Thank watching you. and listening. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Let's see here. Copy these links. There we go. I have so much packing to do still. <laughs> when are you leaving for Japan? Tomorrow at twelve thirty. Oh my gosh. Yep. Jason, uh, I just have a lot to do, and this week at work was crazy. Oh. <laughs> no, I was. <laughs>